I'm creator God. And it's a lie. But they will torture you. And these um, ones pretty much don't want anything from you other than to torture you. Because they're all about control and that's all they want. So it's a very dark place, this matrix. And some of the spirits that talk to me say, well, it makes you a warrior. Not really, because you can't go to war against the matrix. You could perhaps be an involuntary inmate in the matrix. But still, you are a prisoner. And I don't know how to tell you that being an imprisoned person is not pleasant. And somebody else will say, well, your glass is half full. You can say it's half empty or half full. You can count your blessings or you can count your curses. It's all God. And I keep saying, no, it's not God, because it's not good. They might call themselves gods, because they can control you and imprison you, but they're not good, so they're not God. And that's why I always say, it's demonic. So is there anything that is God-like? Yes beings who have disconnected from the matrix control system are benevolent and good. And the people who are benevolent and good want to disconnect all of you from the matrix mind control and body control. And they have a very hard time because uh, you're not aware you're being mind and body controlled. And quite often you're going to react when people who have disconnected from the matrix come to you and say, you know, all the things I'm telling you. Because you haven't separated yourself from the matrix yet. As we get more and more people disconnected from the matrix, then what happens? That is the hero's journey. It's the great unknown, but it's the great adventure. The great adventure is disconnecting you from the matrix to begin with. And once you're disconnected from the matrix, Most of us want to disconnect even more people from the matrix because number one, your mind and body controlled, and number two, because your mind and body controlled, you want to mind and body control us, the ones who have freed ourselves from the general matrix. So, you know, it serves us to free you and it's not an easy task because most of you would rather play video games or buy a big, huge bottle of wine than sit for an hour and watch the Matrix play with you. So it is the Matrix that makes you want to go and buy liquor, the Matrix that wants you to buy video games, the matrix that wants you to go and find another mind-controlled person to 
screw around with. The matrix wants you to get a... It doesn't really care. It just, it doesn't care what you do, but if you follow it, then it feels like it's controlled you and that's in the end all it really wants. It doesn't really care what you do and if it's boring, it's happy. But as long as you're following it and it thinks it's in control of you, it is one. All it wants is control. And sometimes it's incredibly stupid what it wants you to do. But it's not really so much what you do. It's the sad, it's the sad fact that you followed its instructions. And it goes, yes. So that's the story. So far, again and again, I tell you to free yourself from the matrix. You've got to sit inside your body for a long time. I say an hour in the morning, an hour at night every day and watch. And, you know, if you don't want to do a formal sitting meditation, then lie down on the couch. And from inside of your body... Watch what's going on. Watch the impulses that come to your body. Watch the thoughts that come to your body. And if you start hearing non-existent people, know that they are part of the matrix. And it's all designed to get you back in line and following what the matrix wants you to do. The matrix personalities that are, let's say, non-physical, we also want to disconnect them from the matrix. Because for ourselves, they want to control us and we don't want to be controlled. And for them, when they are freed from being controlled by the matrix, then they have got their freedom. And perhaps they will help us to free more and more of us. So we cherish freedom for us and for you, the physical beings and the non-physical beings. And we do follow the Tibetan ideas that, you know, we shouldn't be hurting any of us. So we shouldn't be killing animals for food. And, you know, you can go and follow the Jains, J-A-I-N, which are a group in India who don't even want to kill plants for food. So, you know, if someone needs to eat something, they might take um, one leaf of a plant so the plant can live. And they don't even like doing that, but they haven't figured out how to make a human live without eating food. Is it possible for a human to live without food? There are stories of humans that can live off of, let's call it uh, chi or prana energy in the environment. Are we brainwashed to think that we need to eat food because we have hunger pains and we have eaten since the time we were young and started off on milk? It's difficult to say because there are some people, you know, the anorexics who stop eating and their bodies wither away and die. So it's very difficult to tell, you know, based upon examples, whether the example of the anorexics are true or the examples that were told in stories about certain mystics or yogis that don't eat, whether that can be our way. And if we can figure out how to become 
what we once were, beings of awareness that aren't encased in a meat suit. Does that mean you want to kill your meat suit? No. No, it's not what I mean. Because being kind also means treating this meat suit like it's a being and it needs to be looked after. So we still shower and we still drink water and eat food, breathe air, and we don't tell these meat suits to go, you know, jump off a bridge or something to their death. But we care for these things, but we still want to know why did we ever become associated with these meat suits? Who put us in these meat suits? For what purpose? And if we are not these meat suits, and without the meat suits, what can we do? It's a great mystery. We have many mysteries to investigate, but the first thing we must do is learn to disassociate ourselves from the matrix mind control. If you like my story, you might even call this story a hard to understand one. Because even when you follow what I've told you, you're still going to come back to what am I really?